তোমরা আছেন Welcome, Dr. Saloni. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Welcome, Dr. Mohsin. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, Dr. Saloni, can you hear me? Dr. Saloni Prasad, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Oh, thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. I am glad that you are here. Yes, sir. Sorry, I missed time last time, sir. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Okay. Dr. Mohsen. Dr. Mohsen, can you hear me? Am I audible to you? Dr. Mohsen. Yes, doctor. Oh, thank you very I much. Be... Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, my friend. Doctor, no, doctor. Thank you for I'm, your I'm very happy to you. see you here. Okay, thank you. There. Dr. Amit Kumar Munnu, welcome. Welcome, Dr. Amit Kumar Munno. How is weather in Libya, Dr. Mohsen? It's uh, okay now, but uh, you know, there's uh, Corona too much uh, among people and uh, mm, there are some uh, precautions, but people don't like to obey too much. Um, yeah. Um, uh, the, 
every day there are uh, fatal cases in the hospital and uh, life uh, has changed really life has changed the, we feel sorry for that and uh, the government uh, has not too much to help uh, the people and now studies uh, ceased and uh, somehow every, uh, anyhow libya is okay good good thank you doctor allah barak fik doctor uh, wakil asrafi sahab welcome Dr. Amit Kumar Munu, welcome. Dr. Ashrafi has joined. Am I audible, Dr. Ashrafi? Dr. Ashrafi? Am I audible? Mr. Niran Shuranjan, welcome. Am I audible, Dr. Ashrafi? Can you hear me? <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Oh, welcome. Okay, sir. Oh, uh, good evening, everybody. It is Dr. Sayyid Afuz Shirafi on behalf of Literary Responses. Welcome to you all uh, for the second, edi the second edition of uh, Partition Literature Part 2. We have had a discussion on it uh, just uh, last week, but then uh, this, is the, this is the part two which we are going to have. Uh, let me introduce to my guest today is Dr. Anil Prashad. Anil Prashad has been a globe-trotting scholar has been to Yemen, to Saudi Arabia, and to Libya also, where he had a very long stint as an academician, as an intellectual, and as a professor of English. Uh, he has he has he has, he has a very huge amount of contributions to academics. Uh, he has been writing on partition literature, <clears throat> on comparative literature, and postmodernism, to quote a few that. Is generally his that are this is generally his areas of interest, and uh, let me take this uh, opportunity, or let me say that this is my privilege to welcome Dr. Anil Prashad to this show, to 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 initiate uh, the talk that's to begin now. Hello, sir, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank okay. you very much so for your I... kind words, and I would like to take a few minutes. Uh, okay. uh, I would like to, uh, before I thank Literary Responses for inviting me for this talk, I would like to welcome some of my guests who have come from, as far as from Libya, Dr. Hussein oh, Mohsin, oh. who has been a very good friend welcome, of man. mine, and uh, uh, I welcome Dr. Saloni Kumar, Dr. Sharan Mish, Niran Shuranjanji, Dr. Amit Kumar Munnu, and all other people. Uh, uh, Dr. Vakil Ashrafi Sahab is also there, and I'm, I am. I thank you for giving me the privilege to talk about Manto, uh, uh, which I have been thinking of talk uh, uh, of talking about for a long time. Let us see what comes out of this, and uh, what new deliberations uh, we should uh, we we are going to agree upon. Uh, regarding Manto, because <clears throat> Manto has been a significant writer, and uh, let us reread Manto in the new light. Okay. I would like to begin this session with 
a few lines of some Sher Bahadur Singh. Okay, sir, go ahead, please. Ho chuki jab khat apni zindagi ki dasta, unki farmaish hui hai, isko dobara kahen. Let us begin in the new light. Okay, so, thank sir, uh, sir, sir, thank you very much. Uh, since it is part two, and we have already discussed uh, some of the important questions uh, that we generally have or had on Manto. Now, in this part two, we are going to focus on four stories of uh, Manto that they are Koldo, Muzil, Tobatek Singh, and Tetwalka Kutta. Uh, but before that, I think uh, let's have a general question before going down to the text and before going down to what the stories are all about in terms of themes, in terms of ideological impulses, and whatever they are supposed to represent. Uh, one thing which is very important to know that since we are talking about this particular literature, do you really, sir, think that even today this literature, this partition literature, is as important as, as it was when they were? written so uh, this is a very significant question that uh, uh, and i think i talked about it in part one uh, it's very important even today partition literature okay. because it takes us to the direction of future okay. it reminds of reminds us of some of the atrocities that were heaped upon the people of both the countries. And it's going to guide us for a better tomorrow. This is what I think. Okay. And okay. that is the literary value of it, that okay. it's going to warn us that that kind of collective madness will okay. take us to nowhere. OK, sir. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your response. Uh, let's go to the story number one, which is Koldo, a very uh, highly valued revered story by Manto, and possibly one of the best stories uh, that Manto has written or had written, whatever it is. Uh, let's go back to this uh, Koldo. Uh, sir, my question to you is this, that Sakina in Koldo is, bru is bruised, battered, emotionally and psychologically shattered, but then the problem is this, that uh, Mant is it uh, alone about the problems uh, of Sakina's continuous hammering, physical hammering, and, her, and, and the assaults that, was, assaults that were made on her body? Or is it simply about, about the physical tortures of a girl? Or does it connect you to a sense of history, uh, particularly in the backdrop of a partition, whatever was going about in that moment of madness? So could you please tell me that whether in this story, Manto, does this story reflect Manto's own obsession with sex or does it go beyond that? So that's a very good question indeed. I, I would like to say in this regard that I do not think that Manto is obsessed with sex. Okay. And I have reasons to uh, exemplify this contention of mine. Oh. He is not obsessed with sex. On the contrary, he believes that sex should be discussed openly. Now, regarding Sakina's plight and the oh, sense right. of history, I will come to this uh, problem of uh, his obsession uh, with sex later on, because one of our okay. colleagues have asked a question uh, regarding okay. this. Sakina's plight is not the plight of an individual. Sirajuddin's okay. plight and running helter-skelter in search of his daughter is not the plight of an individual. It is the plight of the whole subcontinent symbolized in their pain and trauma. Now, let us see the story a little bit. Okay. The sexual exploitation of Sakina and the 
girls like her in both the communities was very common at that time. While reading Manto, I have come to understand one thing that people have critically evaluated his stories. Koldo is one of them. According to Manto, it was his masterpiece. But people have ignored certain facts regarding the text. For example, the imagery of clothes. It would be very okay. interesting to see the imagery of clothes, sartorial imagery in some of the stories of Manto. For example, in the very beginning of the story, Sirajuddin is worried about the dupatta of Sakina. Sakina says, okay. Baba, leave it. But he takes the dupatta and keeps in his pocket. When Sakina disappears, Sirajuddin takes out the dupatta and is very unhappy. Now again, at the end of the story, the word hold though the instruction by the doctor has three manifestations of meaning. Another thing I would like to say, one thing that Manto's story should be analyzed in terms of images used by him. The second one oh. is that there must be a semiotic study of his stories. Why? Because Manto is a master minimalist. He has a way okay. of narration that is unique to him. So the word expression, rather I should say expression, called though, has three nuances of meaning. For the doctor, it is opening of the window. For Sakina, it is opening of the another piece of cloth. That is like dupatta, very vital to any person. And for the father, it is that she is still alive. So on these two levels, when I analyze this story, Koldo, I find the part one of your question that it is not about the plight of individuals. It is about the plight of the communities. Okay. Secondly, the stories must be analyzed on the basis of the text, the images used by Manto. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your response and that's a very convincing answer. Give it to the question that I had uh, asked you. The important thing about Koldo is that uh, does it really reflect uh, the tormented psychology of the time? Does it reflect the tormented psychology of the time? And Mantu was very quick to respond to it through this Koldo uh, because uh, there is a girl obviously who has been badly hammered physically. The assault that she has had on her body leaves her completely traumatized. So in that trauma is reflected or manifested the, 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 the complete uh, breakdown of human sense. That is one of it. And again, Koldo, do you think that uh, there is some there are some amorous references also, uh, which can be very delightfully read by the readers, sir? Uh, uh, this, this is a uh, very important thing that uh, there is a difference between pornography and literature. Uh, the difference is this, that erotic literature, it is not erotic literature, it is not an example of erotic literature, but erotic literature goes beyond the body. Body is a cultural signifier. So the pornographic literature pays attention to the anatomy of body and the acts of love. And I'm very happy that this issue is discussed today 
when the sex sells in the market like anything on whatsapp and instagram so here erotic literature or literature in which things have been described like this they are not for sell they are not for minting money they are not the part of the industry money making industry money making venture that is rampant nowadays a recent example of a person who has been arrested for making yes, yes. so uh, uh, in this way also it is a kind of educative story excuse me the... froz sir uh, yes please froz sir uh -huh. please yes. please uh, froz sir i uh, am yeah, getting you please go ahead uh, uh, tell everyone to mute themselves there's so much uh, background music going on so much noise going on uh, we are not viewers, able to sorry. hear dr anil sir viewers please okay. mute there's please, munu uh, there's someone who named munu whose mic is on there's al no. hussein mohsen whose mic is on yes please uh, uh, mute your mic please unmute please unmute. tell them to uh, mute themselves yes sorry, please, please mute, mute your, your mic. mics please mute your mic sir please, please mute their mics ask them to okay. mute their mics please 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 mohsen yes, whosoever uh, has his mic doctor, on please mute uh, dr mohsen dr mohsen please mute your dr. mic mohsen mohsen is uh, otherwise and uh, dr amit kumar munnu please mute your mic yes dr saloni kumar please mute your mic everybody should mute his mic okay well, only when you have to speak you have to put it on yeah there's so much background music yes yes background noise I enjoy that background music there is nothing wrong about the background music <laughs> no there is an echo i think if there is yes echo in the disturbing yes. echoes are there no, it disturbs sir yes yes it does it, yeah. does. it, it disturbs yes okay. uh, thank you very much dr saloni uh, dr mohsen please uh, yes, mute yes, your doctor. mic please mute your mic okay uh, dr munnu dr munnu please mute your mic dr uh, saloni Kara. kumar please mute your mic Okay. Uh, shall, I, shall, shall, shall I begin? You. Yeah. Yeah. So hey. uh, here. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, here, the primary and the principal aim of <laughs> pornographic literature was to sell, and so they do not go, go beyond the. Language. They do not go beyond the. Uh, beyond body. And here, the context is very different. here the context is not to describe the body but the 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 kind of thing that was done to the body because of the kind of madness that dawned upon the people okay. those who were to save they turn out to be the devils yes the devils so, so here is a message the that those social workers they are doing the same like those who were uh, considered enemies so where is the protection where is the safety this is one point another point that is very important that is the psychological condition of sakina that she has become like a robot her actions were automatized and conditioned because of the repeated acts of violence sexual violence so how a person changes psychologically that is very important so for manto uh, this kind of complexity to narrate this kind of complexity is very important rather than describing the body i will come to other stories when he describes okay. the body and see how it happened okay <clears throat> thank you very much sir because there is one of the allegations on the man who is this that he was a skin flick writer many 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 skeptical mind 
many skeptical minds and many skeptical reactions were there because he was that was the time when even co he was summoned by the courts also thrice three times or more than that five I'm times i'm not very sure about the number five, five times. times yes yes so he was summoned by the court because the content of the story was somehow viewed or somehow interpreted in terms of uh, something that would have offended the sensibility of the society of, at that point in time and that was something which uh, uh, which the audience or which the viewers or the readers were not very uh, ready to accept that be something which not shocking in terms of uh, uh, what it is uh, and and uh, when it comes to the treatment of body when it comes to the treatment of how it regales you psychologically and and, and emotionally because uh, you become a part of the whole process when you read the story that under the conditions this a sakina a sakina had to go through and sakina was so bruised and emotionally complete and and shattered so that that has a context anyway so the, the, that 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 uh, allegation of monto being a skin flick writer uh, generally stands dismissed because we do not buy that uh, we don't take that uh, apart uh, regardless of uh, the erotic or the amorous references that we have had in his stories okay sir thank you very much and uh, let's move on to to the next story which is one of the most important and possibly one of the most powerful simultaneously uh, a story by uh, one of the most powerful stories by uh, manto is tobatek singh uh, obviously that what what epitomizes the fictional genius uh, of manto is this uh, story tobatek singh where madness itself becomes a solution to the oppressive problem of or uh, what the partition really entailed in terms of a bruised psychology or in terms of a assaulted psychology for that matter now the question in fact is this uh, that tobas tobatek singh is a cynical response of a writer to the collapse of the human wisdom isn't in this cynicism lie the most sensible reaction of a writer of that of that of the time when he says in tobatek singh tobatek singh or when through the uh, tobatek singh he communicates the message that uh, neither this part of the fence nor that part of the fence do i belong to i belong to no man's land and that was the real moment of freedom sir yeah that is uh, uh, very important your question has already answered itself uh, has been answered by you uh, partly but i feel that it is not a cynical response it is a very sensible yes. response to a situation that was created at that time that situation was the situation of rootlessness the situation okay. of uh, cutting of snapping of the umbilical cord the sudden violent uh, removal of the people from their places of birth and manto in a very master stroke creating the character of lunatics who when someone asked that pakistan kahan par hai kaun si jagah hai to uh, uh, then uh, another character says pakistan hindustan yes. mein ek jagah hai jahan usture bante hain so people okay. he has such a kind of subtle ironical and satirical spirit and that's why his story this is the most widely read story toba takes him and it is aesthetically satisfying and intellectually illuminating the ending of this story is so pathetic that toba takes him toba takes him the name is very interesting because takes him is a person uh, uh in uh, at that time in his native place he who used to uh, uh offer water and shelter to the travelers who were tired and toba in punjabi means a small pond so he is called toba taxi because he used to uh offer people water and uh, shelter and food when they were exhausted and tired Oh, so this so attack singh for the last 15 years he was standing on his legs and he hmm. didn't budge a, an, inch an inch to go yeah. ahead and he died in the no man's land the description right. that o oh, ek shigaf uh, cheeks pe wo gir pada there was a very piercing uh, uh, cry and he fell down 
and where did he fall down he fall he fell down in no man's land between the barbed wires of pakistan and india and that is the ending of the story okay and it is not <clears throat> a cynical reaction i would again repeat that it is a very sensible reaction that even the people who are lunatics they have a oh. sense of homeness and hearness so wisdom lies in lunacy also i think uh, yes what the message into but take thing is because uh, if if you are we have some eccentric designs about your mind there will be necessarily a message in the intricacies in the eccentricity of the design itself uh, uh, thank you very much sir for a very convincingly oh, answering the question yeah, and uh, i think we cannot drag it too far because we are short in time and we have many things to cover still we have two stories left uh, so i will go to one in between i will have a question apart yes. from the text of these stories yes. sir partition writing has been a common pursuit with a shared trauma for one of the most uh, harrowing conversions in history there are writers like intezar husain and there are three languages involved in it not that i am not talking of only urdu language or urdu literature there are three languages involved in it, english hindi and urdu and on all these three languages there are some great stories written this side of the fence and that side of the fence also and possibly to the extent that uh, uh, beyond particular literature there is a sense of vacuum about the greatness of fiction you know in at least with regard to hindi and urdu literatures these two this is what the case is because we had writers like mumtaz mufti we have writers like uh, like abdullah husain we have writers like rahim nazar mohan rakesh a uh, kamleshwar and a host of others uh, then we had uh, from pakistan also like uh, a babchi sidwa who's cracking india or as standing man all that so they had a common pursuit uh, don't you think that this common pursuit has been drawn dragged on for too long uh, and and it has been on since then it hasn't come to a stop at all in terms of uh, putting an end to what this partition from uh, this uh, convulsion was uh, and and the way this literature reflected them all throughout is also as harrowing as itself uh, or as uh, horrid as uh, the partition itself was so why is it that uh, we have not been able to go beyond the matrix of this partition literature in terms of ideological impulses and there have been great models of writing sir uh, uh, yeah, that's true your question has many questions and uh, yes. okay. uh, one by one i would like to answer the questions one important thing is that we should look beyond in manto we should look yeah. beyond partition and the stories of prostitution yes he is not uh, he wrote about partition but he has people forget that he has 22 volumes of short stories yes. and there were many stories written by him like ram khelawan again i come to the point i the, the ram kelawan is a dobi and he washes clothes and how he comes uh, uh, emerges as a uh, a person uh, a different person at the end of the story is very important it is also about partition but it is also not about partition it is about human nature about human condition about human relationship there is another story sahai there are many stories like uh, there is sogandhi their story is a very powerful story now manto is a class apart he is a very different type of a storyteller but there are others also who are also very good storytellers like uh, intezar husain and abdullah husain and uh, babsi sidwa chaman nahal yeah. kushwan singh and Kushwan-Sing. so many yeah. people are okay. rahima sumraja adago yeah so partition was a traumatic has a traumatic impact on the people as i told in my last uh, discussion that it is not only a matter of history it is also a matter of family history because those who 
got displaced. Their family gatherings with the things which they have brought with them, they used to look at it and look at it emotionally. The attachment with the place, land, things. And that's why it became a, a, a part of the family gathering. And that's why it continued because they, they could not think of anything else because it was yeah. in, their, uh, in their psyche. So this is one of the reasons uh, that is very important for people writing about uh, partition. As I told you last time that Krishna Sobhati has written in 1917 a book, Gujarat ke Pakistan se Hindustan, uh, Hind Pakistan ke Gujarat se Hindustan ke Gujarat tak, in which again uh, the plot is constructed around the political problems created by the political leaders, and political leaders are blamed. If we talk about Ram Manohar Lohia in, the, in his book, Guilty Men of India's Partition, he also blames uh, five or six people the communities and the social situation and the religious environment that was created. So partition came as a blow. It, is, it, it came as a sudden blow. And people were so much disturbed by this. Their families, some people lived in yes. India, their brothers, cousins, parents, they went to Pakistan. So this kind of disruption was there. And it was not a thing that is going to be easily forgotten. And this is one of the reasons why people, to my mind, uh, wrote about partition and fictionalized it. Uh, and uh, I think like this. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just a and we also discussed no. that there, are, there were writers who we have went beyond you. this even today. Okay, we and have, yeah. In the last Yes. Edition one, we did it. Yes. yes. So there's no point in going back to all them. Yes. That's why I'm not taking questions from whatever we had discussed already okay. in the last edition of the talk one. Uh, this is the second edition on partition logistic part two. So obviously we are focusing on Manto. And uh, since Manto is one of the greatest writers, not only in Urdu literature, but across the globe, you can always claim a position in terms of uh, uh, literary distinctions and all. Okay. So, sir, now let's come to uh, down to this death wall Kakutta, a very identical story and narrative that we had in Dabatik Singh. Do you think this death wall Kakutta that arises the banality of military posts, uh, because there were two military posts, one on the Indian side, the other on the Pakistan side, and, and, and they had all absurd action going about uh, without uh, any, any potential threat, without any uh, forcing any danger? in terms of aggression from this part of the border or that part of the border. But then there's also the image of a dog. And they demand a loyalty from the dog. Ah, now, yeah, it's okay. Okay. now it's okay. Now it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, are, we apologize for this interruption. Uh, yeah, are, thank you very uh, much for please. this. And we are sorry for that. These are all technical snacks and we yeah, cannot please, help yes, please, please go ahead now. Yeah. Okay, sir. My question was uh, on this uh, Walka Kutta. And, and uh, to have to, to, to have the question going is this uh, that Tetwal Kakutta satirizes the banality of military posts uh, and the image of a dog questions muscular nationalism on either side of the border. So what was the point in having a military post for both the countries when there was no potential threat uh, to the security of the nation themselves? Sir, so, please. Yeah, that, that that's a very good question. Now you see Thank you. that. A few days ago, they were one army. Yeah, right. Now they are divided into Army of Pakistan and Army of India. India. Now, I always suggest that the text should be read very carefully. It is about the conflict, the military conflict. Tetwal is a very, uh, uh, very picture obscure place, pictures yeah. place in Kashmir. And uh, it's very, uh, it's description. Uh, if you allow me, I can read the second paragraph of the story in English. Please go ahead, please go ahead. The weather was extremely agreeable. The air infused with the scent of wildflowers and on the heights and slopes of the hills, nature oblivious to the sound of war 
nature was going on. Nature mm. was unconcerned about what was going politically. It was the same uh, in a very short poem by Thomas Hardy when uh, the nations fight, the farmer is plowing his land because nature is eternal and yes. the political regimes will come and go. That is a message that is very subtly given by Manto in many of his stories. So here, nature oblivious to the sound of war went busily about her duties. The birds squall, the flowers bloomed and hovering drowsily over them in their same old way, slow moving honeybees sucked out their nectar. So in this kind of ambience, when Harnam Singh and his soldiers were thinking of Heer and Raja right. and singing and not able to sleep because of the, they think about uh, this and suddenly a dog appears. This dog, in my understanding, when I read the text carefully, I find that this dog is a symbol of refugees. It is a symbol of people who are just moving around like animals, like dogs. And they make fun of the dog and finally they kill the dog. Yes. And they say, then this is from Pakistan. And they say, this is from Hindustan. And they give him bread and they make fun of him and he dies finally. So what does the yes, story sir. say? Is it only about uh, military conflict? No. It was a state of affairs. Nationalism. Uh, nationalism. Nationalism of a different kind that was muscular military. That was imposed on the psyche of the people and the people were mad. If I uh, digress a little bit and I'll tell you about the story Sahai. Many people conjecture why did Banto go to Pakistan? Some people say that Shyam, his friend, his close friend, Shyam, the star of yesteryears, when there was a there was killing and the news mm. of killing, he said to Manto that I could have killed you. Yes. And some people say that this is one of the reasons and many people uh, do not agree with this and they, they know that Shyam went to Pakistan and he helped him publish uh, Upar Nietzsche and Darmian and so many things and the friendship was still there intact. But there was a fear and there could be a fear like this. So people didn't know what they are going to do. They didn't know what they were going to do they didn't have any uh, fixed thing in the mind. And the political leaders, uh, they were saying things uh, which the people who were ignorant and illiterate, they didn't understand. So they were like dogs. They were killed. And this is the story about, and this is a very okay. pathetic story about the plight of the people And also, let me, if you could add, uh, not through a question, but just one of the reactions that uh, I, what I personally feel uh, when, when there's an image of dog and the dog uh, crisscrosses the two posts, uh, the Pakistani military post and the Indian military post. And in that action of the dog, the dog is completely bewildered as what does it, what they do want from him. And finally, in a moment of anger, the, the, the dog has been shot. He gets the, receives the bullet in one of his legs and then drags on and finally crumbles there. So do you think that the death of dog is the death of the refugee, as you said? It, it is not so uh, simple that it is the death of the refugee. It is the plight of the people. They become refugee. And what happens when they become refugee? They die the death of a dog. What yeah. happens with Sakina? in the refugee camp. So it is not uh, 
or something that uh, the dog is killed and that is uh, the it, 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 it the things are symbolized in the killing of the dog and they say ye refugee hai ye sharnarthi hoga they laugh at him yeah iska naam and look at the names given to the dog by both the sides yes it is a kind of absurd uh, absurd name given to them and they laugh and they say chapar junjun and they say sapar sun sun so this is something uh, absurd meaningless thing so this points out to the meaninglessness of the action of the political leaders to that's what we are okay so thank you very much sir for your response to this the very important question and uh, very quickly we we can move on to muzil because we are running out of time uh, we do not have the luxury of time at our disposal and we have to uh, we have to have to wrap it up very quickly uh, so going to muzil uh, which is one of the again one of the most uh, read stories of manto muzil and possibly it has a class it has a, a, that element of distinction which keeps it uh, and which makes it look different from the other stories of manto do written in the same partition background uh, do you think that here manto aligns with a jewish character in this story while dwarfing the character of the sikh sir lochan singh muzil prevails and finally it is the heroic of the muzil which saves the life of quite a few people there towards the end of the story i uh, uh, i have different opinion about uh, okay the character it's not my opinion sir it's simply a question to you yeah okay <laughs> i have different opinion regarding this because after you uh, uh, once discussed this with me i again uh, read the story muzil third time and mm. i found that manto used to extol the virtue goodness and virtue of the fallen women i give you examples in 10 rupees in the story 10 rupees he highlights the innocence and playfulness of sarita a very teenaged girl who is mm. forced in the ways of prostitution by her mother and yes. then in another story sharifa he again does the same and a very important story that is in urdu uh, if i pronounce it wrongly please correct me hatak right hatak hatak translated into english as insult or sogandhi so sogandhi again it's a very uh, important uh, uh, character in terms of subalternism that how sogandhi who is struggling and insulted and injured psychologically but comes out larger than life sharda again nazir and sharda sharda is extolled in sahay also we have seen sultana so what i that's see that's the kind of women yeah that, that the, yes, what right. i see that mozel uh, i i i have divided this story into uh, seven eight sections mozel okay is, very quickly sir because we yes, are running out of time yes mozel is a flirtuous woman she flirts with others she is very liberated and she does not care for anything but she cares for uh, uh, trilochan trilochan yeah. and she teases him a lot regarding his religion regarding his uh, uh, being a sardar and who is so handsome and uh, feminine in his uh, appearance yeah, yeah. and uh, he is slightly foolish trilochan he shaved off his beard shorn off his concert head yes yeah. and uh, he thinks that she is going to marry him tomorrow but she goes to uh, devlali with no. uh, her friend and does not come then he thinks of 
his fiancée, Kirpal Kaur. Now suddenly, uh, Mosel appears on the scene yes. and looks at Trilochan's worries and mm. takes him to that area that is called uh, in the story that is some B, B area or something. Now again, again, I would like to uh, say the same thing regarding the clothes, the image imagery of clothing. Here also, the, long gone, the yeah. gown, the turban, yeah. the other garment that is very humorously and very ironically being referred to in the story throughout the story. Now, turban is a symbol of religion. And when she is stark naked, look at the description of Manto. When Moselle is completely naked, he says that she is naked like an innocent child. So I remember William Blake, when he talks of nakedness, that is, there is nothing obscene about it. So when we say that Manto is obsessed with sex, uh, I don't uh, agree, agree with this. That. Oh. Uh, Proposal. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we are almost running out of time. Yeah. To be uh, one to... or two points okay. I would like to say. So here, Please. Moselle is a unique story that is uh, related to partition, where Moselle emerges as someone who is different as she is described in the beginning of the story. So only a master craftsman like Manto could do this. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much sir, for your very convincing response to a very disturbing question, uh, because uh, you are always the one to address doubts uh, of the readers and uh, doubts of the you know, viewers also. So I always have, have my doubts about uh, how it really happened. And then uh, even today, I am not as much convinced about the character of the Lotion thing, because there, there is an undercurrent of uh, some kind of uh, uh, dislike or some kind of uh, a dwarfing tendency for somebody like uh, uh, because Tilochan was a Sikh and Sikh are generally very audacious people. They are not co. There is no act of co-audits ever. Uh, there has never been any act of co-audits on the part of Sikh. So that's what really disturbed me, ailed me and arraigned me and therefore I had this question for you. Uh, okay, sir. So all these four stories have been covered duly and we never had the time to go into the great details to take up them textually. So some, we uh, will keep talking about all these and you have given enough clues and you have given enough hints about what they are supposed to mean. And since uh, Manto is a huge writer, he's a very good writer and one of the greatest writers that, we can, we, that this world has ever seen. So we will, we will keep deconstructing him. There will be no, there cannot be any finality of judgment about him. So there, there are grounds for rereading of the text and there are grounds for reinterpreting the dynamics of the stories as is always in the problem with the text because there is a text always within the text uh, that we must go into and you have already gone into that because you have taken a plunge into that. Uh, yes, sir. So is, do we have questions from viewers? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Viewers, do you have any question? Any question, viewers? Professor Saloni? Hello? Any questions? Any question? Anybody? Any observations? Any observation? Anything which is disconcerting for you, you don't agree with? So please answer. You can, you can answer, sir, because I had forwarded the question uh, to you. Yes, please. Quote her name and answer the question, please. Uh, where is the question? The question is that uh, whether she is obsessed, uh, Mantu is obsessed with the sex, or 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 does he write for something like that? Okay, I let me get you the question. I will give you the question because her question is very much with me. Uh, I think uh, this question is. Uh, just a minute, sir. So, yeah, I understand the question. I, I would like to answer it. I I, okay, okay. Uh, I answered. Please. I tried to answer the question. Uh, tried to answer the question in the beginning. 
but with reference to her question peter yeah but i i would like to say a few things more about it i have already uh, told that uh, the two dimensions of human sexuality the two dimensions yeah. of human sexuality that is uh, pornographic literature and erotic literature there is always a thin line between them and that's, they are almost identical but the the big difference is in the description of human anatomy and the act of love whether it is drawing painting a sculpture photography film it is the same the thing is the how the beauty is perceived because body as i said semiotically if you allow me to go yes, sir, please, please. into that direction <clears throat> it is a cultural signifier body always signifies culture it is not a physical entity per se and that's why the aesthetic and subjective response to it is different in erotic literature and in pornography as i said that pornography does not go beyond the body pornography sells of course we sell books but it is very different yes. and the contextual for example if you read the novels of uh, haruki marakami or uh, uh, if we if we go through if we go through upar niche darmiyan in which lady chatterley is mentioned mm. and there are many writers in the modern world like lawrence mario uh, vargas losa mm. vladimir <clears throat> vladimir novoko but they are not treated their works are not treated as pornography they are work of art so art. there is a difference between the work of art and the commercial art so this is how sorry for interruption yes ha huh, bhai अच्छा ठीक है फिर बात करेंगे ठीक ठीक तो दिस इज द डिफरेंस एंड दिस इज अ बिग डिफरेंस दैट लेडी चैटरली लोवो इज नॉट ए पोर्नोग्राफी दो दे वर लेबल एज पोर्नोग्राफी बाय द क्रिटिक्स बाय द कोर्ट बट दे इमर्ज आउट ऑफ इट यूलिसीज and so many uh, works many other for example but the problem is the the thinking the people what is what kind of aesthetic reaction is there what kind of reaction is there what kind of sense of beauty is presented it is for its own sake just for titillation just for arousal of baser passion does it uh... or just to raise the does, yeah. do they have other <clears throat> purposes as as there is a purpose uh, a very important purpose in the story of uh, uh, manto dhua right dhua dhua is about hormonal changes i would like some young people to read these stories and i like the parents to read uh these are stories very like well said, uh, like, very, very like dhua and uh, boo yes boo dhua is a yeah. story yeah. you see how many levels of dhua when masood is when masood yes. is going to the school he finds uh, uh kaza bakre ke kate hue ghost se dhua yes, yes and then he finds the people who are inhaling and exhaling dhua and when he comes home he finds from the hadi of his mother the palak is being cooked and there is dhua and then there is a dhua in his mind the confusion 
And this confusion is beautifully expressed by Manto. And it is, it is not a, a, a literary subject, it is a medical subject. The hormonal changes. And mm. then he is trying to break his hockey stick. So symbolically, so convincingly, this has been portrayed. Again, the story uh, um, Boo is of similar kind of a story. But he has okay, different so. kinds of shades. But they are not Boo, pornographic Boo. literature. They are not pornographic literature. He is not obsessed with sex. And sex is a tabu. A tabu. I would like to tell you that sex is a taboo all times to come. It was a tabu, a tabu in the past. It was a taboo in the past. It is. A, it will be so like a, that. It is a taboo Even now. the conservative nature of the yes, family. Yes, it is a taboo culture. now. Yes. And yes. it will be taboo in future. So this is not a, a thing to uh, discuss that it was a taboo or not a taboo. It is always a taboo. But Manto broke all taboos. Manto broke all taboos. And that's why he is a master craftsman. The kind of control he has over his material, the kind of language he uses, the kind of minimalistic portrayal he has in Dhua is remarkable. He is compelling, pellucid, convincing. Yes. Yes, it is convincing. Very correctly said. Yes. The, those who have it convinces uh, even uh, our own skepticism about uh, the nature of the writing. Uh, those, 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 those who have read Upar Niche Darmian, those okay. who have read Upar Niche Darmian, there is no single, there is no single statement or reference of sex, and everything is clear. And everything is uh, visible. So what kind of uh, art is that? How he has mastered that art? It is a mystery. And I, I, I would like to, if you permit me, I would like to read. Uh, uh, very one, quickly, sir. Very quickly. Yes, very quickly. Few, few and uh, left, none yes. other than uh, uh, Gopi Chan Narang, he says about Manto something, and that is very, uh, 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 I liked it very much. Manto, in his finer moments, is attuned to the symphony of the mystery of creation. And in this symphony, his dominant note is the note of sorrow. The sorrow of existence, the loneliness of the soul, and the unfathomable suffering, Dukh, which is past of the music of the infinite. Very much a modern temper. Uh, the times we are, we are believe the time. Yes, uh, uh, this is again a very typical modern modernist temper. I would call that because you have loneliness, you have isolation, you have you are condemned to uh, condemned and to suffering, despair. angst. You, uh, yes, suffering, and you pine in isolation throughout, and that uh, there is a kind of a despair in the atmosphere suffused in itself. So, thank you very much, sir, for your some very compelling, convincing, uh, and authentic you. responses to my some very ordinary questions. Thank you very uh, much. And I for... hope, I hope, I hope the viewers must have uh, enjoyed that because I have, I myself is a beneficiary from this talk because it opened some dimensions that were, that I had missed. It brought me or took me very close to some of the dynamics of interpretation that uh, I thought I was missing. It has updated my understanding on Manto and it has opened some new windows as far as the interpretation on Manto stories yes. are concerned. I thank you, sir, from the core of my heart. And I also thank my all my viewers for be, being uh, for being with us for this long. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for your time, uh, uh, and thank you very much. Uh, uh, you thank you, thank you very hung much. Hang around. It has your... been a very fruitful, very constructive discourse, and we have lot many things that we had to cover. But then, in one program, we can do justice to all aspects uh, of Manto's writing. Manto yeah. is as open as, as he was, and he will be open as much as uh, he is even tomorrow. So, for it is for the young readers to deconstruct Manto and try and find some new dimensions and aspects about his stories. So, once thank, again, thank you I very much really for your kind words and for your eloquence. And I would like to greet and welcome and thank uh, Dr. Hussein Mohsin, uh, who has joined us from Libya mm -hmm. and all my friends from India. I welcome and uh, 
I, in particular, I welcome Dr. Hussein Mohsen, who has been a very good colleague and nice friend of ours. And thank you all viewers and thank you all friends uh, for uh, joining us. And again, we will meet uh, next will time meet with some, with new, some topic. new topics. Yes, right. And, <laughs> very much around the corner. It's very much around the corner. We are not going to spare you. <laughs> Thank you very much. From the Saudi Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asrafi, for giving me the chance to talk about it. Sir, I was talking to a scholar. It's my own pleasure, Thank my you. own privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.